District Digital Creatives at NAB 2018. Brought to you by Black Magic Design, leading the creative video revolution. Landers Scientific, reference displays and advanced color management devices. OWC, the speed to create, the capacity to dream. And Adobe, everything you need to design and deliver exceptional digital experiences. This is GKJR at Black Magic Design at NAB 2018. We're here with Dan May, president of Black Magic. Dan, how you doing, man? Yeah, it's day two, so we're certainly keeping it going here, trying to stay high energy and telling people about all the new products that we've come out with. So what is new at Black Magic? I know it's a lot to digest. It, it's always a lot. Right now, we've launched a ton of new products even before the show, some of our new ATEM capabilities that we've, we've put out there. I'd like to cover a few of those that lead up to some of the announcements from today. Uh, earlier this year, we had a couple of new broadcast-oriented products like our uh, ATEM 1ME broadcast panel, a brand new panel that works with all of our ATEMs, uh, has all of our new sleek design, comes in at an even lower price point of $3,000, but something that would really be effective to pair with our ATEM 1ME and our ATEM television studio Great new design, easy to use. We've been shipping that for a few months, but it also looks so great with our new uh, control panel that we have here for all of our color shading. So a lot of times people have been using some of the software in the ATEM to be doing some color shading. Some people were happy to play with our Arduino shields to be able to do some of that color shading. But this is a single unit that can go ahead and control four cameras at a time, but those can even be updated to roll, run with more cameras on there and give you that really great tactile control to be able to do all of that color shading across the ATEM, uh, ATEM products that we have as well as with, one, with some of our new URSA cameras, which we'll also talk about. At this show, we've actually come out with our new ATEM Television Studio Pro 4K. And some people are familiar with our ATEM Television Pro HD, which is an eight channel, really our first all-in-one panel and switcher at the same time. So all of the inputs and outputs are on the back. This obviously is an ultra HD switcher, so it can do HD and ultra HD, but it's got eight 12 gig SDI inputs as well as eight 12 gig SDI outputs to be able to do all the returns back to things like URSA Mini Pros and URSA Brasscasts. The other really cool thing about this particular switcher is it does have our new green screen or our uh, uh, green screen capabilities that we've added into our ATEM 2ME broadcast solution. So that's been added in here. But one of the most fascinating things is we've added an actual up down cross converter on every input. So that's something we've never done on our switches before. You always had to have them all be 720 or all be 1080. Now we have the ability to actually say, look, that camera can be 720, that camera can be HD, that, uh, that laptop can have a new resolution that's coming out and that works for that and it just works right off the bat. And lastly, we've also added new Fairlight audio all throughout the, so being able to go into our new EQs, being able to split up a single channel into stereo channels. Really great new features we put in for a whole $600 more than the original HD version. So what you're looking at between these three units is a $3,000 panel, a $3,000 control surface, and a $3,000 Ultra HD, most powerful switcher we've ever had, really filling out our entire live production line. I'm really happy to be showing people at the show this year. So let me just jump in your new ATM Studio 4, Production Studio 4K. Big deal. I work in the live industry, and Blackmagic is listening. We've been wanting, we use different switches for different events. We've been wanting in Blackmagic switches, up, down, cross, convert, conversion. You have put Terranex into your switcher. That's exactly big right. Big deal. Yeah, it's, and it is a big deal. When we originally acquired uh, the ATEM product line, that was one of the things we had to take out in order to reduce the cost. Of course, we wanted to go ahead and create, how can we create the world's best switcher at $1,000, that original ATEM television studio. And of course, that became widely popular and adopted by lots of people because it was like the first time you could have a great HD $1,000 switcher. Now, as time's gone on, obviously our Terranex IP and our technology there, we've been able to further develop that, bring that cost down. So actually being able to now take that and implement it along with Fairlight, along with some of the Resolve technology and use some of that intellectual property we have and reduce the cost of all of that, now we, for $3,000, can have this incredible Ultra HD live production switcher that does have that up-down cross capability. So here's my big question. Your larger ATM. Obviously, a lot of the studios I work with and production houses I work with, we're using that forever. Mm. Are we going to see Terranex later on down the road inside of Because that's, that's the biggie. Well, we certainly can't do that in already existing products because that's a hardware-based solution. So we're going to see how this switcher goes, see how the response goes, which has obviously been going well so far. And then we'll just kind of take it from there and see how things go. Well, I can tell you the response is going to be great. And we're going to want to see Terranex inside of the larger switcher. So I know we're going to switch across to the, and talk about cameras. So... That's a big deal also. So we're going to switch over to the broadcast and we'll chat about that a little bit. 
So, Dan, we covered the ATMs. Uh, let's talk about Arsa Broadcast. Yeah, it's a new camera that we came out with earlier this year. We, we knew we were going to have so many things coming out of NAB. We wanted to give it its own space to kind of exist and breathe on its own, get enough press coverage, and really introduce it to the world on its own because it's such an important part of our product line. You know, last year we had introduced the Ursa Mini Pro, which was a great camera, added things like ND filters, dual recording slots. It was a 4.6K camera, great for cinematographers. The interchangeable lens mount was a really important thing because you could start with the EF, go to a PL, and go to a B4. So it's a camera that could kind of be for everybody. But what we really wanted to do was create a camera that was really meant for broadcast, for live production, ties into ATEMs excellently. And that's really what the Ursa Mini Broadcast, or the Ursa Broadcast, I should say, is. It does have the same body as the Ursa Mini Pro, so you still get your ND filters, you still get your dual recording slots. But the big change here is that we actually have a 4K sensor, because we don't really need the extra headroom of the 4.6K. Right. And it's really built around that B4 uh, capabilities there. So you're getting all that great functionality, but it's all set up to be that live production kind of camera. And because we've gone to the 4K base sensor, we're able to bring that price down from over $5,000 to $3,500. And that's important because we want people to use multiples of these, right? right? And anytime right. you can reduce some of that cost, there's better chances of someone to be able to use multiple cameras. And we want that because of all the color shading capabilities, all the talk back and tally capabilities. And of course, when talking about a camera like this, you, know, you can use it in the run and gun configuration where you put right. the EVF on it, or like we have here, you can put the studio viewfinder on it. And then while we were announcing that product, we also want to introduce our new SMPTE solution that we have here, which is what we're showing. So this is a two module system where we have the SMPTE camera converter on the back, which does your SMPTE, carries power, has all of your XLR and controls on the back. And then of course the SMPTE studio converter, which is going to take that and then convert it back over to SDI brings all your power over, gives your audio monitor, but this is what's gonna allow someone that says, I wanna go out and do you know, an NFL football stadium. Right. How am I gonna do that long run, right. go all the way around the stadium? You know, SDI, as great as it is, isn't gonna quite cut it. So this is where you start seeing these SMPTE fiber modules tied into the Ursa broadcast, and these will work with Ursa Mini Pros too. But again, something that we hadn't had right quite flushed out before, really pulling all that talk back tally, um, being able to have that power over the uh, SMPT fiber. Great new solution. Everyone that's used it has been super excited and thrilled to use it and really happy to be kind of relaunching it here at NAB. Right. Again, um, I'm not saying this because uh, Black Magic is a supporter of uh, DDC. It's a big deal because I work outside of production live. It's such an really important part of what we do. The converter system, there's always been this, I guess, folks look at the Black Magic camera and say, ah, but now there's a big second look because now we have a control unit on each camera and the, yep. pri the price point is great. You know, for th those who are watching this, I'm actually shooting this interview on a broadcast with an EF mount, mm. which takes five minutes to change out. Yeah, very so easy. So this is definitely a big deal for the industry and I've already seen these in the wild already with box lenses and different lenses, so it's definitely seen some really major action. Yeah, in the it's definitely being reused in real world solutions. And you know, we've seen this kind of progression of black magic design. Obviously we've been a camera manufacturer for a whopping what six years now. So we've learned a lot as we've gone along. You know, the brand has become more and more trusted. People have seen these out in the wild. People have been using some of those original ATEMs and original cameras. And we continue to build on the success of those cameras and the support from our customers and the feedback from our customers. And these are the reasons why we're able to kind of continue to move and improve and release products like this because we've had you know great support from our customer base, lots of great feedback, and we want to kind of continue to improve and give back to our you know, community that we've all kind of come from. So tremendously important for us to come to shows like this, get that user feedback, talk with our customers, talk with our kind of friends in the industry, and make sure we're putting out really high quality products at a you know accessible price point. I don't want to say that they're, you know, cheap or super affordable, but obviously we're trying to empower as many individuals as possible to go out and do truly professional work at the highest level with products like this. Excellent. So Ursa Mini Pro, would this camera shoot in 4K, would it match up a little bit? It'll with, be a little bit different because it's a different sensor and every time we do a different sensor, there are some small differences. Now obviously we use all the same Resolve color science, so a lot of it has the same kind of look and feel, but it's not quite the same as we're not building the sensors ourselves, so things will be slightly different. Right. But of course, when you have solutions like DaVinci Resolve, things like that, we know we're gonna be doing some amount of color tweaking, some amount right. of ability in there. So depending on what you're recording as, raw, or if you're doing a ProRes recording, that'll affect some things as well. But obviously it's all the same color science, so it should be able to all match up in the end. Excellent. Um, you had a big announcement at NAB, the new pocket camera 4K. We're gonna switch over, we're gonna take a quick look at that. You got it. All right, guys. Um, Pocket camera, long-awaited. It's jam-packed with techno technology. 
Tell me a little bit about it. Yeah, you know, we, we've uh, we've been working on this for a long time. Obviously, we didn't really want to get to another show where someone said, "Yo, you should really make a pocket camera 4K," and we go, "Oh, really? I think that's a good idea." So it's it's been a long time in the works. And one of the big challenges with making a 4K camera at this size is obviously thermals and how much heat it generates. And if you recall, we used to have our production 4K camera. We kind of for a while thought that was as small as we could kind of make these 4K cameras. Now our technology has gotten better. Um, we've worked really hard to get it down to this size. Now it's quite a, it may be hard to see, but it's quite a bit larger than the actual pocket camera itself but it's certainly smaller than those original cinema camera right. and production 4Ks. The, the final weight of this thing is going to come in at about 1.6 pounds. So, you know, certainly less than the weight of most normal DSLRs that you see out there. But it is really the intellectual successor to the pocket camera. It still has the 13 stops at dynamic range, right. still has the MFT lens mount, still uses the same uh, LPE6 batteries. Uh, but there are differences here. We have the four-third size lens mounts, or four-third size sensor, I should say, which means you're going to have basically that one-to-one -one, no real crop factor going on in there. Uh, this is our first camera that it's had a dual native ISOs. So the dual native ISOs of 400 and 3200, I believe, going all the way up to an ISO range of 25,600. So certainly a much wider ISO range than we've ever had on a camera before. But we've also added in just tons of little things that over the years people would say like, oh, it'd be great if you had multiple card slots, much like the Ursa Mini Pros. Right. So we have our SD card slot like the original pocket cameras, which can also take UHC. A CFast card slot, this is also our first camera that has a USB-C, which allows us to hook up another drive to it. So if we want to record data directly off to the drive, this camera has that capability. Things like being able to have a photo button. So if I'm not right. recording in video, yeah. just being able to click a click a button and be able to take that DNG file and store it over in a photo. You know, right. Something that everyone was like, oh, it'd be just so great if I could take a few couple right. fashion shoots, pop, pop, pop. Pop, right. pop, 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 pop really quick and then be able to, you know, get those stills stored right. off there. Right. Uh, full size HDMI, XLR mini right. with a phantom power. All those little things that over the years people were like, we should do that. And we were like, oh, wow, we really could do some of that. Right. We've stuffed it all into this camera. Of course, being a little larger with all those features, it's a little more expensive at 1295 so we decided to add a free copy of DaVinci Resolve Studio Excellent. with every camera. So Excellent. really excited about this camera. Hope to have it shipping in September. And the feedback so far at the show has been tremendous. So obviously, uh, yesterday was a big day during an announcement. I tweeted out a few things, posted a few things to the Black Ma Magic Forum. Um, ProRes 444. Obviously, I'm passing on what folks are asking. Is this? Are we going to see ProRes? Yeah, at a higher we're going to see what we're going to see what we can do. Obviously, there's there's some hardware limitations there as well. Um, you know, we wanted to make sure that we got enough of the codecs on there with the obviously the uh, LTHQ422 and of course the RAW RAW31 RAW41. So we'll see if there's any more optimization to be done. Obviously, we've still got a few more months to get out there, but you know, this is what we know we can do, and we'll see if there's things that we can kind of get done along the way. And before I let you go. Obviously, ProRes RAW. I know you can't give me no answers, but obviously, a lot of folks are thinking about it right now. Sure. You know, you know it, obviously, Apple is a big partner of ours. We have 24 ProRes compatible devices with Apple. Uh, we have lots of Thunderbolt devices that we've worked with them on. They're a very close partner of ours. So we understand what the ProRes RAW solution uh, is about, and we've talked to them about all of those things. So yeah, I can't certainly comment on what the future is, but it certainly does make sense for us to keep working with them. Things like Resolve with ProRes, uh, ProRes RAW makes sense from a compatibility standpoint. I guess the one question we have to sort out ourselves is, does it make sense to put on a camera like this? We already right. have RAW technology. Right. We already have those ProRes capabilities. I'm not sure what the ProRes RAW completely adds, so we have to kind of go back and do some digging ourselves. You know, Apple will work at their pace, we'll work at our pace, and we'll continue to work as partners with them, and we'll just kind of see how it goes. Excellent, Dan May. Thank you, uh, as usual, sir. This is GEK Jarrah for District Digital Creatives at NAB 2018 at Blackmagic Booth.